Hello and welcome to Shopping for the Real You. I'm Andrea Flammer, the author of Shopping for the Real You. And today my very special guest is Tara Brody. And you are going to love this interview. <laughs> Hi, Tara. <laughs> Tara is a costumer in Hollywood, and she's going to describe what that entails and what it means. But I want to start out this, um, this interview by uh, reading a little quote from Dev Patel. From uh, We all know him from Slumdog Millionaire. This was in the uh, uh, December issue of InStyle magazine, and the interviewer was Rachel Rylick, and she says to him, uh, how do clothes impact your confidence and performance when you're on a set? And he said, my work has really given me a respect for clothing. Your character becomes finite and real once you've got it on. There have been times when I haven't felt comfortable in my costume. It just hasn't fit the energy of what I was trying to achieve in my head. And the performance hasn't gone right because of it. It changes the way you move, the way you act. So I thought that was a perfect introduction today. It really is. What well, wonderful words and very true. Very Good. true. So first of all, uh, explain what a costumer does. Sure. Uh, well, basically, there's a costume designer is someone who I believe tells the story, just like a director tells a story or the writer tells a story and they use their words. Uh, the cinematographer will use the lighting to tell a story, a uh, composer will use music. So a costume designer uses clothing, the uh, fabrics, colors, textures. Everyone, it's a collaboration, but I like to say that it's always everyone telling their own version of the story, and hopefully it's the same version, but we don't get to use words, we use fabric. <laughs> That's fabulous. Yeah. So how did you get into this, this work? I mean, Sure. Well, I went to fashion school in New York and I went to Syracuse University. I then worked in the, they call it the garment district or the fashion business in New York City. Um, it was very challenging in its own way. I love fashion, but something I learned about myself is maybe I love fashion because of the art of it, but not so much the business side or that, you know, just cutthroat <laughs> financial part um, involved. And so I, um, let me see it. My sister put me in contact with a costume designer that she had met in Los Angeles while I was living in New York. And she invited me to come and intern for her. And I did. This was uh, back in 2009. And I fell in love right away. It was, it was something that I never realized was my calling, but it made perfect sense once I started it. Because for someone as a child who just grew up demanding to dress myself by the age of two years old. <laughs> Exa exactly. Or losing myself in the department stores, in, t in the hat section as a, a three-year-old and my poor mom not knowing where I've gone. It was just constant games of dress up was how I entertained myself. And who knew you could make a career out of it? <laughs> <laughs> That's so fabulous. Yeah. Um, and so we knew what your big break was. So what, talk about what some of the biggest challenges are in, in costuming a character. I mean, do they hand you the script or do you work, how does that work? Well, basically, um, it, yes, you get a lot of your clues from reading scripts because something I personally uh, find helpful when reading a script is just adjectives. Um, you, a writer will just not write a word without any meaning behind it or an adjective. So if you read a script and uh, it says, you know, enter uh, the, I don't know, the auto mechanic and, he, you know, he's rough around the edges or he's seen his share of violence in his life. These, this isn't just an arbitrary um, explanation of who he is, it, these are almost just, not just your clues or indicators, this is his character. So you take those words and you, I guess, transcribe them and they turn into um, your indicators for how you choose the clothing. And I find it incredibly important, but also, you know, there's conversations you can have with the director or the producers or who they're looking to create as character-wise. And another great indication is who they cast. If they cast someone with a very specific look, 
it must mean that they're going a certain direction for, for a character. Um, and I, I find it just thrilling. And I think the you, you can read the script and then you can get your ideas, but the final indicators, when you see who they've cast for a role, you say, oh, okay, so they want to go that direction. They, they wouldn't cast Dev Patel for a role unless he just eluded some kind of character about him and his persona. So it's like that. <laughs> so when we see someone on the screen and they really feel authentic, right. they're authentic down to the clothes that they wear. Absolutely, absolutely. It's definitely a collaboration with the actor when they come in for a fitting, but the process will start. You know, you read your script. Um, I assist many very talented designers and we have a discussion and we find out who's cast. Um, let's say <laughs> on Shameless, I, I got the opportunity to uh, help create so many entertaining characters uh, because it's a character driven show. So here we are in the south side of Chicago, a place where you don't want to be lost, let's say late at night. And <laughs> yeah with the family that is oh so shameless and the characters are too and it's it's they like to do almost over the top because the stronger the character the more just potent um, and the more you get on screen and um, it's not just for a, a, the a, like a on a network television show you're not just trying to look at pretty people on shows like shameless a cable television show it's it's all about character and it's all about real reality the realism of this, the moment so let's say that we uh <laughs> we've had characters like just described as the the trailer trash neighbor or maybe the russian uh, pimp that's running the the you know the prostitute has like next door well something like that obviously you're not going to just go shopping at barney's to find the newest hottest trendiest clothing um that's where the real character and creativity is involved um i always found myself going into the rental houses uh i worked at warner brothers for quite some time and on shameless as well so i would go into the warner brothers costume house and i would just start going through different uh not the contemporary, but, you know, maybe through the 90s section because you can find some clothing that's already aged and very gritty looking. Um, maybe I'm going to step into a section for the bikers because they just have some really bad thrashed flannel shirts that have been cut with the, to made sleeveless. Um, and it, and it's, all, it, it's all about the details, obviously, um, and color because color obviously portrays a certain character. Um, um, uh, yeah, exactly, and it's and it's subconscious, but it's completely done on purpose. Um, you you know you're not going to dress someone in red without an, an absolute reason for it because they need to stand out. So let's just take uh, this character of the the Russian pimp, you know, and he's mafioso type, and he should he should look like he comes from Mother Russia. And he's not yet quite Americanized. So it's going to be about gold jewelry, right? It's going to be about maybe a, a black leather jacket because you want to feel immediately that you're just not looking at your average Joe from middle America. And um, I think you, you do that and you do it quickly because the goal is to show the audience who a character is immediately. You do that through those details and like layers, like the leather jacket with the or the gold jewelry. Sure, of course, your shoes are always going to be important to, to um, conclude the character to find your you know overall image. But uh, you really just don't see much feet in television. Is a secret I'm going to tell you. So it's all that's kind of the last part you you get to. But they are still very important. Those shoes. I would put this guy probably in some kind of really bad pointed black leather shoe that's yeah like a loafer type maybe there's some kind of snake skin involved <laughs> you have to be something of a psychologist as well yes oh that's fascinating you said that it's we're on the same page here because something the first designer i ever worked for told me you know our job yes it's 50 percent creative but the other 50 percent is psychology and it's not just the psychology of the character because yes, you get into that character's head and you think, uh, why did I put this shirt on today? Well, it's because 
you know, my, my mother gave it to me 15 years ago and I'm still tormented by the death of my mother. So I do anything I can to feel closer with her. You know, these are the backstories and you create them or you, you hear them from the writers. But um, yeah, the other part of the psychology is the psychology of um, uh, collaborating with the actors, um, collaborating with your director and producers because Everybody has their vision of who this character is, and they, you have to take all the ideas and jumble them to just create that one look. You get one look, or maybe a multiple if you see that character for different days or reoccurring. But it's still a look that has to continue, whether or not it's you know different clothing and different changes. Wonderful. This is so wonderful. So. Um... How much of the clothing that you select is from, say, for example, the Warner Brothers uh, costume department, yeah. and how much do you actually go out and shop? Oh, wow. That's a great question. So it's completely dependent on the show. When I had the um, amazing opportunity to work and shop on Scandal, the uh, majority of that is obviously the creme de la creme of shopping at Rodeo Drive and Saks and, <laughs> and Neiman's and you know, uh, a lot of the character suits were custom made like from Brooks Brothers. And, and of course, because you are creating the world of the political elite of Washington, D.C. Everything is perfect and that in just that direction. You must feel like you're in Washington, D.C., even though that show shoots in Los Angeles. Um, in order to do that, the clothes have to be impeccable and correct. But that's going to be different than... Um, for example, the show I just uh, finished uh, this last season, uh, Animal Kingdom, and um, that's on TNT and starring Ellen Barkin. And on that show, it's a bunch of surfer dudes. Uh, her, she has three <laughs> sons, yeah. And it's supposed to take place in Oceanside, California. And we would we shot it at Warner Brothers, and, but what, I, what did I do? I, I didn't go back to the same stores I would go to for Scandal. I got to know all the surf shops around town in the LA area and it was and all the surf brands and you had to put yourself in the mindset of a surfer to the details of their jewelry. I, I learned that surfers like to wear the St. Christopher necklace, yeah, let's yeah. say. Protection. Uh, for the, exactly. And it's something they sell at all the surf shops. And I wouldn't have known that until I really familiarized myself with the, the surfer world the way they wear their board shorts or the way they wear just, you know, throw on a jacket or a hoodie. It's it seems haphazard, but there is a look to it, you know? Um, so different, obviously different shows just regulate <laughs> where you'll go shopping. But again, with Shameless, majority of that show is going to be from a costume rental house because it is so character driven that you just can't find it new in the stores because it doesn't exist. <laughs> it just doesn't exist. you know it just does it and a lot of times um you want to show how aged the clothing is that's something that was very specific to shameless everything pretty much that went on camera had been through an aging process now stuff in the rental houses it's already old that you don't actually have to manipulate the clothes any further but let's say you needed to have what we would call doubles of something because it got blood on it or they're going to have to reshoot it because they get thrown into water and we have to do another take of it dry. Um, you can't always find a double of some a unique one of a kind piece in a rental house. Mm -hmm. So you have to go out and buy it. And then we have agers and dyers. That's their job. Their job is to break down that clothing and make it look aged, make it look 20 years ago. <laughs> wow. That's right. incredible. Um, is there ever a circumstance where they actually have to do, not couture, but they have to actually construct things for the actor? Oh, yes, absolutely. Custom made. Um, yeah. There are some wonderful tailors that are here, obviously, in L.A. This is a studio town um, that you, uh, it's a collaboration creating the, the pattern or the style of the shirt, of the dress, of the pants, and they custom make pieces for you because... If you have the time, which in film you will, but TV moves really fast when you're uh -huh. shooting an episode in just one week. Um, you might not have the luxury of custom making everything that you would like to, um, but it is available to you if you, if you have the time. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. And I imagine when you do go shopping, you have 
a, a unlimited credit card. <laughs> oh, God willing. Uh, we, I mean, obviously we have a budget just like um, all departments and um, uh, yes, you do have to have your, your, your credit card <laughs> available to you. But um, what's really nice is we have relationships uh, with all the stores and they know that we're going to, let's say, pull or uh, buy I don't know, like two racks, like uh, worth of clothing. Maybe there's 50 pants, but only one needs to work. But that's how you prepare for the fitting is options, oh, options, options. I, I... And then sadly, all the things that didn't work, they have to be returned. So it's a lot of work to, just to create that one look that you see on camera. And um, luckily with the relationships with the stores, they know the process and um, I've been fortunate enough to, to really cultivate those relationships that I have pretty much every manager of every store in this town on my, on my phone under the favorite section. And they've been so helpful that there might be a 7 a.m. Oh my gosh, we need another one. We need another shirt. It, it, it somehow, you know, so an actor spilled their coffee on it. Who knows what could happen? <laughs> and uh, I, Call, call my source up, please, can you open the doors early for us? And that, and they'll do it. That's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. And, and I'm, um, do you have, uh, so you have great tailors in yeah. LA in general, but yeah. do you have in-house tailors for, uh, to fit the costume uh, yes. to the actor? Yes, we do. Um, if, when you're working, let's just say at Warner Brothers, they have their own tailor shop. Mm -hmm. um, they have wonderful in-house tailors and they service all the shows that Warner Brothers puts on, and, and then some. Um, as is Universal Studios, they have their own tailor shop. But then also um, many shows you work on, uh, as in also like Scandal, we had uh, tailors that just worked only for our show, that were the tailors for our show. And the amount of work that they can get done in such short time, because the pressure is really on when you have a matter of hours, I, I mean, I commend them. I could. I, I, I don't say I couldn't do it, but it would sure be a struggle. And they are c complete professionals, and it's impressive what they can get done in, in just yeah. a matter of minutes. That's yeah. wonderful. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I respect, I, I know a lot of people in the industry, and I know that you respect the privacy of, of the people you yeah. work with. But there's probably some people that, that you really enjoyed working with or some projects that you've really enjoyed and you'd love to share some of that. Oh, yeah. Um, wow. You know, I think the, the best overall scenario is every time you get, you have an actor cast, and you go and you, you pull for them and you think, wow, this could be such a great character. I hope they're going to be, not risky, but I hope they're going to be all about it, taking that, taking that on, that, that leap of faith of getting really into this character and being bold. And when they walk into the fitting and they say, I want to go all out. I trust you. Do your thing. These are just like words from above. I mean... It couldn't be more fulfilling and gratifying when you hear those words, and then together you get to make the movie magic, and you go extreme, and you go you go character driven. It's not about oh what brand are these pants. It's about oh my gosh, these pants are like from the '80s, and they look so bad, but I'm supposed to look like a a dad who hasn't left the house to go shopping in 30 years. So they work, yeah. <laughs> character wise, they work. And um, I definitely shameless. Um, most of the actors who are character actors come in, and they 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 really want to go um, deep into character because for them it's fun. You know, they can play the same role like I don't know a lawyer on criminal television shows, and they're wearing the same black suit. Um, once you get cast as a fun character, it's it's dress up time, and you get to be another person. And I think that they really love that. And we sure love it too, because that's the creative process. That's right. Yeah. So, are are you ever still starstruck? Oh, what a great question. You know, it's funny. I I'm I'm not because you know we become so desensitized. I want to say there have been a few times, and it must have been because 
Okay. Someone from like my childhood, there was an actor who I thought was cute when I was uh, just a, a child came in and they're much older and I thought, oh, I think I was like in love with you uh, when I was 15. This is so odd. Or, you know, um, someone I really enjoyed meeting is um, on Animal Kingdom. Uh, there's an uh, actor named Finn Cole and he's one of the lead actors. And he does a show called Peaky Blinders, which is a British uh, television show that I am obsessed with. I mean, I love it. It's outstanding work. Obviously, it's it's in Britain. They film in Britain. I never thought I would even meet someone from that cast being in America. And and it's funny because even the theme song is my ringtone. That's how much I'm really into the <laughs> show, right? So uh, I remember when Finn was cast as the, the lead actor on, on Animal Kingdom, one of our leads, and I thought, wait, that's the, that's the guy from Peaky Blinders. Oh my gosh, he's here from London? And then he walked in just a few minutes later for his fitting, and I said, oh, uh, I really love Peaky Blinders. <laughs> and he said, oh, well, you know, thank you very much, you know, in his British accent. <laughs> And then I said, someone call my phone. Someone call my phone. And, <laughs> and I said, look, it's my ringtone. And he said, wow. I mean, thank you so much. And he was so flattered that uh, an American was, you know, not, not just knew of his show, but like yeah. appreciated the work so much. And um, I thought that was a really fun, fun experience. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, this is just fabulous. I, I, I neglected to, to talk about um, some of the works that you've been on. You've worked on, obviously, Animal Kingdom and Shameless and Scandal, American Horror Story, yes, Charlie's yes. Angels, yes. Um, Kirstie, uh, with Kirstie Alley and Rhea Perlman, yeah. Yeah. Michael Richards on Almost Famous. Um, is that That's going to be a TV series? Yeah, it's a TV series that comes out next year oh, starring fun. Alan Warren. Fun. Yeah. I loved, adored that movie. And you're doing the... Um, the uh, you're the shopping assistance for Get Shorty. I love the book and I love the movie. And oh. that's, oh, Ray Romano is, is in it. Yes, he is. Oh, oh yeah, what, what a fun show that is. That's the one I'm currently on. And um, it is, it's a spinoff of that movie, Get Shorty. And same, same premise, the same characters, but obviously portrayed by different actors as it's 20 years later. Um, but yeah, Ray Romano, what a, he plays a, like a washed up, producer character that Gene Hackman played in the right. film. And talk about someone who loves getting into character. I mean, he was all about it, you know, put put him in the the not so tailored, borderline, um, mm, schleppy kind of looks and not cool, but is trying so desperately to look cool, but he's just, his mindset's from, you know, 15, 20 years ago, so, okay. so are his clothes, cool. you know? Cool. And so that's a fun one to work on for sure. <laughs> that really, that really paints a picture of the character and of the work that you do. This is just, this is just so much fun, Tara. I, yeah. I want to thank. I know my viewers are going to absolutely love this episode. <laughs> oh, thank you. I really hope so. So, Tara Brody, thank you so very much for your time today. It's very informative. Um, I understand you travel to Europe a lot. Oh, yes, I do. I do. That's actually been really helpful as I've definitely created some relationships even with some vendors, you know, abroad in, in Milan or in Paris. Uh -huh. <laughs> Take me with you next time. <laughs> Again, Tara Brody, thank you so much for being on Shopping for the Real You today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.